we will start now in the last two classes we have learnt two things what is the first thing we learnt first thing we learnt was that we don't have much knowledge in chemical reaction engineering and chemical reaction engineering is the basis for entire chemical engineering okay and then second thing at least i asked you to learn is the attitude for learning or the pleasure in learning so it is very easy to waste time in uh, anywhere in iit madras also it is nowhere different you have many many different things here to waste your time so but without going to that mode of wasting time you try to read the books or try to read some papers or uh, you know whatever interested problem for you or interested course okay spend more time with books rather than with uh, you know other uh, things computer also you should not spend so much time unless it is really required computer is one thing which distracts a lot so these are the things we learnt that means you know i try to change your mind uh, a little bit for active learning right and two years particularly for mtech is a very short time and three years for ms and ms people also can submit within uh, two years also theoretically speaking one and a half years you can submit the thesis ms people right so that is very short time to learn but it doesn't mean that you stay here 10 years or 12 years okay so that is also too long time to learn also because i think you know you will get bored and then slowly lethargy everything will come so that is why there is optimum time you know for you two years for uh, mtech and 3 to 4 years for uh, phd then that time should be very optimally used so at the end of that four years you should see yourself a different person if you look at yourself particularly in the in a mirror okay that's why every day you see mirror and try to change the Uh, try to look at that change whether when do you have that change you will suddenly have all these kind of things will come most of the time suddenly okay you discover it is suddenly it the progress may be change in uh, that change may be very very slow but suddenly one day you discover that yes now i changed but that means change means not physically your nose will not change or you will not have three eyes okay and then uh, four legs or 10 legs so uh, you don't have but only problem is that you are attitude in learning and suddenly that beauty of learning something that happiness you will see that happiness will come when you learn some concept on your own or after discussing with some people everything you don't have to learn on your own so that is the happiness you have to search for during this uh, time here then i will tell you one concept thoroughly learning okay either with the discussion or on your own then you yourself feel that happiness and no one you cannot share that happiness with others even if you go and tell your friends that oh my god i am very happy now because i learnt this a uh, small concept which i i never knew earlier i had lot of difficulty in learning that concept but now suddenly i see the clarity in that concept they may think that i am mad fellow yaar i think you know uh, you will be talking like that the, that they may say but that your own pleasure is more important for you so these are the things which we have learnt in the last two classes and now we thought that we don't have that much knowledge in uh, chemical uh, reaction engineering and chemical reaction engineering is the main topic in chemical engineering that is the only subject which can differentiate with any other engineering i will tell you why you know in course of time but right now i think i don't want to explain that now itself so it is unique course that's why it needs some background of asking even what is chemical engineering okay so i mean you know that without chemical reaction you cannot produce anything that's why my first question would be i will write the questions here i don't use most of the time uh, this uh, ppt i use only this uh, board so the first question is what is chemical engineering and second question also we will ask that what does a chemical engineer do yeah the third question is how does any chemical process any chemical process start okay so actually by looking at the questions you can learn a lot that's why you have to question everything whatever you want to learn first question 
then if you get the answer to that question correctly, then you know what is happening there. So, you have the sufficient knowledge. Then the fourth question will be, what is chemical reaction engineering? Yeah, and uh, okay. Fifth question is, what is the information necessary for reactor design? Okay. And last question here is homogeneous and heterogeneous reactions. Oh, difficult to write. Yeah, these are the questions. I hope you can see my handwriting. Okay, you can understand. Okay, good. So these are the questions, and the first question when I ask what is chemical engineering, can you define now what is chemical engineering? Can you say a few words? What is chemical engineering? Material to a given product. Yeah, good. Yeah, any other definition? Yeah. You understood now what he says? Repeat again, Gani. It's a science that they, that uh, involves the processes involved in changing uh, raw material to a given product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is the science he says. Okay. Yeah, but what the question I am asking is engineering. What is chemical engineering? So he says it is science. It is not wrong. It is correct only. But any, any other definitions you know? It deals unit operations. Huh? It deals unit operations. Ah, so because it deals unit operations, can you call it is chemical engineering? Because you know he is right. Every time different people will tell different uh, definitions for chemical engineering. But when you want to explain what is chemical engineering, it needs some time for you. That means you have to understand what is happening in chemical engineering, then only you can tell. Any other uh, definitions? He says uh, uh, unit operations, no? it deals with unit operations. So, that means there are no unit processes, there is no process control, nothing. Only unit operations is chemical engineering. You see how many things uh, you know we are missing by saying that, right? But again, you are not uh, wrong, you are right, because everyone is right when they are giving the definition. Because that is what at this point of time they understand that is chemical engineering. Yeah, any other uh, definition? It tells how to design a reactor. Sorry? It tells how to design a reactor. Yeah. So, you see now, there is only again that means he does not bother about unit operations. He only designs the reactor and that is chemical engineering. Uh, that is chemical engineering. Right? So, like that we do not have a particular definition for chemical engineering. All of you are right. So, at this point of time really you should know you should be able to explain, my uh, thumb rule is that always you should be able to explain to your brother or sister, which is, I mean, who is younger to you, then if they are able to understand, you are able to understand what is chemical engineering. That is what is your thumb rule. They should not run away the moment you open your mouth. Right? So, that is why if you are able to convince them, this is what is chemical engineering. That is what, I mean, uh, which means you have to explain in a very, very simple words, like even uh, uh, Gani, what he said is, you know, he won't understand. Can you repeat again? It is a science deals with dealing with. Yeah, you try to tell that one to your brother, because he doesn't know. First of all, what is science? Do you know what is science? What is the definition of science? Okay, so this is official definition. Where official definitions, most of the time, you don't understand clearly. These are only a bunch of words. But for that, you need lot of information in your mind. The information should flow in your uh, blood, then only you will try to explain that. Like for example, if I ask you to explain, okay, that is the definition. So, what is chemical engineering in simple words? The simplest thing which I find is that chemical engineers produce chemicals on very large scale. Okay? This very large scale is very important. Why? Chemist also is producing chemicals. Right? So, the moment now you know that you are trying to produce on large scale, I can give you a very simple examples. Chemist, we have also some chemists here, okay. you have also done uh, physical chemistry 
experiments or organic uh, synthesis experiments. Okay, all of us have done in our uh, B Tech days. So, what do we do? If you want to produce a new chemical, how much you take? Milligrams. In the laboratory, milligrams. Maybe 100 milligrams of A, one component, and another 100 milligrams of other component. Right? So, then what do you do? You put that in the test tube. Right? And then uh, after putting this uh, 100 grams, 100 grams, then temperature is required for this reaction to take place, you go to Bunsen burner. And then you put there, shake it. Put there, shake it. Why do you shake it? You, if you just put there, it won't uh, react. Yeah, why should I mix? Yeah. So, all these things without even knowing yourself, you do all that. Okay? So, at the end, how much product they get? Something may evaporate also. So, then you may get, you won't, they will not get 200 milligrams, they may get only 150 milligrams or 160 milligrams. Okay? And then you try to remove that uh, product from there and then try to find out whether you have really that product or not by some other chemical test. Now, just imagine you want to produce 1 ton of sulfuric acid. Can you put that in a test tube? Go and shake it. Okay. So, that is where the engineering principles will come. Right? In uh, for example, you, when, when you are trying to produce some chemical large scale, maybe 1 ton scale, 500 grams, 500 kgs, 500 kgs, then you charge this in a batch reactor. Let us imagine simply batch reactor first. Right? And then it is 1 ton capacity. You do not know how to shake it. So, that is why you have to put a stirrer. That is an engineering problem. Right? So, you have to learn principles of engineering where this mixing principles. Right? So, this is what, what you study in which subject? Yeah, mechanical operations or sometimes fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics also they have mixing chapters. Okay? So, then that information that engineering knowledge will give you how to design a stirrer. And there are various kinds of stirrers. It is not one kind of stirrer. There are so many kinds of stirrers. So, now you have to see with your experience, with your knowledge in that subject and uh, you know what kind of stirrer is the best for this fluid. So, that means, what is that you are trying to do again? You are trying to find out what are the physical characteristics of this fluid what you are dealing. It is whether it is highly viscous or it is only Newtonian fluid or non-Newtonian fluid means again you will have different uh, uh, you know it is not easy to mix or whether you have solids and uh, so you see one reactant may be in solids form, another reactant may be in liquid form. So, then how do you stir this? Right? Or it may be one liquid is in, in gaseous form and another liquid is in liquid form. So, now this liquid will be bubbling, uh, yeah, the gas will be bubbling through liquid like you have seen no soda or Pepsi, cola whatever you see that kind of bubbles. Now, you have to stir them. Okay? Stirring means again when you have this kind of two different uh, phases like gas and liquid, how do you ensure that you have good mixing? That is what we do in chemical engineering. And these uh, principles or uh, 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 this, uh, this engineering knowledge is not required for a chemist. Their job is, we cannot blame them because they, they, they need not worry about this kind of large scale production at all. Right? Their duty is whether a new reaction they can find or not, which will be useful for the society, for the humans, either may be in terms of you know medicines or it may be uh, in terms of some intermediate for this medicine or it may be some paint or it may be some other uh, you know uh, some acid or it may be benzene or toluene, some other new component where it will be useful or some plastic component before that you know you, that re chemical reaction should take place. So, this is what is uh, you know that engineering principles. Right? So, that is why when you talk about chemical engineering, what you do is that on large scale you have to use always engineering principles. Because we are dealing with chemicals, it is called chemical engineering. Right? So, now uh, other thing which I want to tell is that you have only talked about mixing. Right? What about heat transfer? Because now you have taken this test tube put in the Bunsen burner and then you know exposed that for uh, temperature. Because the diameter of the tube is very, very small, 
uh, heat is uniformly distributed. So, by, by uh, shaking even inside that liquid also will have uniform distribution. So, there is a possibility for the reaction to take place throughout that small volume uniformly. So, that is why you are shaking there, right? but that we cannot do on one ton scale. So, what I have to do now? Stirrer we put, but how do I supply heat? Right? It may not be supply heat, sometimes you have to remove heat, because if it is highly exothermic reaction, you do not want that kind of heat to be generated, because you know it may catch fire or it may spoil the product. So, that is why you have to control the temperature, that means you have to remove heat. What do you do? Yeah, you cooling jackets. Again, many questions will come. Where do you put these cooling jackets? Directly inside the reactor or outside? Why outside? Why not inside? So, all of these things are chemical engineering subjects. These all form engineering subjects. But when you talk about that chemical reaction alone, how a molecule is going to attack another molecule and then the collision of these two molecules will give the product. That is the science. He is not bothered about how it is removed at all at that time when a molecule is coming and hitting another molecule and that energetic collision will give you the products, all that theories we have. right? So, for all that he need not use any engineering principles there. Only thing is one molecule you visualize, another molecule will come collide and then the resulting collisions, some energetic collisions will give the product. So, now he has to interpret okay, when so many molecules are coming and colliding, how do I find out what is the rate of reaction? Because finally, so many molecules are colliding, so much product is formed. So, now what is the formation of product rate of formation? Similarly, uh, the, uh, the opposite part of that is what is the rate of reaction? Because when the rate of reaction is happening only production is happening. right? So, that is why that is why you have you know Lonspiel's great uh, word is minus R A. Okay, you only popularized that minus R A. For us minus R A means rate of reaction for the reactants. Right? So, products normally we never use. So, but that is the science part for us. Okay? So, that is why chemical engineering one of the simplest definitions is that chemical engineers produce chemicals on very large scale. That large scale is nothing but chemical engineering. Why? For example, I told you heat transfer you read in chemical engineering and mixing you read in chemical engineering. And when I also have uh, um, the batch system, so uh, I told you this mixing also come in fluid mechanics. That means, fluid is moving and also after completing your reaction, you have to discharge that products and then you have to send it to some other uh, maybe distillation column to separate again if the unreacted reactant and product. So, that means, that is the mass transfer equipment that also sometimes they do, chemists do. right? How do they do that? They also have very small distillation column, it is a single stage, only one baker and then just uh, heat it and the, the vapor will come condense in a simple condenser and then they get the product. But imagine that to be done on a very large scale with you know hundreds of uh, tons per day, what kind of big size of uh, condensers you require? That is why we went to distillation, which is a wonderful uh, operation. right? So, all these things and you know, the fluid flow automatically comes, mass transfer, distillation is a mass transfer operation, because you are separating two, that means you are making two um, components move separately. Okay? Mass is moving from one place to the other place, right? So, from liquid to the vapor, and then you condense and again take it. That is what is mass transfer. So, now, if you want to control the reaction temperature, automatically controls will come. So, now you see, you know fluid mechanics automatically coming, mass transfer automatically coming, control automatically coming and uh, you know material and energy balance comes much before that, because you know how, how much you have to put in the reactor, how much will come out depending on the conversion. So, all these things, all subjects are covered now. right? So, chemical engineering is, uh, is the field where you produce chemicals on large scale. You try to explain this to your brother or sister, they will happily understand that. You are giving examples now. So, because we are we have to produce very large uh, amounts, so we cannot take small uh, equipment and then shake it and then take the product. So, we have to um, I mean mix uh, thoroughly and you can also tell that you know 
mother is mixing in the kitchen with uh, you know some kind of spoon okay or uh, you have that big spoons and all that so with that she will also stir when she is cooking sambar again uniform right so we, even i think that kind of big spoons also not possible so that's why we have to go for real stirrers with different uh, shapes and sizes so that is what what we read in chemical engineering then he understands okay so that is why starting point is chemical chemical reaction engineering chemical reactions and then automatically all subjects will form they have to support this particular reaction that's why always i have that dream i told i think my earlier students also this dream is to have flow chart with only reactor that is the minimum flow chart that you can have if i have a reactor i designed a reactor where the reaction is taking place at room temperature okay because many biochemical reactions are taking place at room temperature there is 100% conversion okay now i also have pure reactants what do i need and also 100% conversion pure reactants will go to pure products so directly you can send the products to supermarkets only thing is fluid flow you should have pipes or you should have some conveyor belts where you can just directly send to supermarkets so that is what is a beautiful subject for chemical technology where you don't have to remember any other equipment now we know what is the uh, what the hell you had when you are preparing for chemical technology examination how many flow charts you have to remember right so i know most of you would have remember i also did the same thing right so all of us try to remember only as much as possible after the examination one sneeze everything will come out forget so tomorrow you don't know what you have written yesterday in that examination so that will be beautiful now if you are able to design this dream flow chart that is my dream okay we can't we have only this kind of reactions if possible unfortunately they are not possible we don't know after 100 years 200 years it may be possible right so that is why that flow chart you will have for each and every chemical where you have heat transfer equipment heat transfer you have to study mass transfer equipment mass transfer you have to study flow you will have and also you know storage vessels you will have so all that learning is chemical engineering we don't have to tell a particular definition i told you definitions will be always difficult to remember anyway i am going to tell you the official definition okay you have to note down and then keep it with you but the simplest one is that okay and i have we have forgotten one very important subject i have not told you till now what is that thermodynamics where does that come we yeah actually thermodynamics is the god it says possible not possible not possible means you cannot do anything possible means you can do something yeah okay reactions plus anything else equilibrium, equilibrium diagram yeah where do you use equilibrium Okay, I use the interface, but what do you do with that? Distillation. We draw. Where do? You, oh, sorry. Conversion. 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 the initial and the last state can be measured by thermodynamics yeah i mean okay reaction we say that you know it is feasible or not that is that is that is information you get but how fast means only you have to go to kinetics that is what is the reaction engineering okay that is why it is science because when you are looking at a molecular level it is science when you are looking at bulk level that means okay forget about molecules i will put my maybe you know to uh, to study the kinetics maybe 1 kg of one material another kg of another material now there are millions and billions of molecules in that i don't worry how they are reacting but after waiting for 10 minutes i will see the product so that means you are now looking macroscopically in the system and then try to find out at the end at the end means maybe you know every uh, you know you want to find out uh, concentration with respect to time so every time maybe 5 minutes 5 minutes 5 minutes 5 minutes you try to check whether reaction is happening or not that is what is again reaction engineering you are not really talking about science there science is that going into the molecules and then try to find out okay in what way 
in what angle this molecule is going and colliding another angle, I mean another molecule. Only some angles may result into product. And then you try to, because all of us are ambitious, we want to produce as much as possible. So, we would like to send all the molecules in that only that orientation where you get maximum product. Okay? That is scientific theory, you know, experiments also they can do and then they can prove that. Right? So, this is what is the one of the simplest definitions of chemical engineering, where you simply say that okay, we produce anything, any chemical on very, very large uh, scales, that large also is really large. If you go to ammonia production, where they use for fertilizers and all that, the plants may be 10,000 tons per day, 10,000 tons per day, 10,000 into another 1000 uh, kgs per day. 24 hours you have to produce that. Like that, even sulfuric acid, you have know, that bulk chemicals where large amounts you produce. And the beauty there is, you go to that large scale and also you produce maybe 1 kg, 2 kg, very costly medicines. You cannot produce more than that. Okay? For example, in biochemical engineering particularly, extraction of some chemicals from uh, you know kidney, liver and all that, you know. Uh, we also do that in biochemical engineering. Biochemical engineering is no way different than chemical engineering. Okay? So, that is what is the simplest definition. You remember this what I explained. right? What is that you are trying to do in chemical engineering? And if someone asks, this is the problem. I think even now, many people in, in, in even in IIT Madras, some, I think I stayed here almost 30, 32 years. Even now, some of my letters will go to chemistry department. That means, people do not know the difference between chemistry and chemical engineering. Okay? But it is very good and the, my uh, another uh, thing which I, I, I started saying last uh, 4 5 years suddenly that idea came to me is chemical engineering starts when chemistry stops. Very nice no? Repeat what I said. <laughs> chemical engineering starts when chemistry stops. Chemistry stops. Where, does the, where do they stop? Small scale. Small scale. That's all. I think that is very simplest one to remember again. I told also in one of the conferences as uh, I mean this is inauguration for uh, chemistry conference. I told that I mean we are cousin brothers, but you go to till certain place afterwards we continue the journey. So, then you know, I say I first to, told this sentence you know chemical engineering starts when chemistry stops. That is one of the simplest definitions also which you can give. Then you can explain what do you mean by that. Right? Because many people do not know, I think only we know, uh, you should know, then only you should tell, uh, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise if they ask, okay, tell, then you may not know. Right? So, this is what most of the time it is happening to you in interviews, only for, uh, for your happiness or for, for some great effect, you use very difficult term, okay, nanotechnology you use. Then when I ask, okay, tell me what is nanotechnology, <laughs> that is all, I think you know only nanotechnology, you cannot. So, nanotechnology, uh, nanotechnology, uh, nanotechnology, <laughs> because you do not know, you do not have even one example where this nanotechnology really works. Okay? I mean nature has started already nanotechnology, right? I think big bang theory, you know all fundamental particles and that build up slowly, whatever shape it wanted, of course, that is by nature it has done it. But humanly, we want to do the same thing, that is what is nanotechnology, right? Till now, the molecules, the way they are combining, you allow them to combine. But now, we do not want to allow them the way they want to combine. We want to have our own type of, uh, you know, the products. That is why, I think, you know, this I have been telling also, some of our friends are here, already taken this course. And, uh, you know, I tell this example always. I was in Malaysia for two years teaching. And I was teaching CRE course and then I asked, uh, how do you produce sulfuric acid? So, I asked, I think in Malaysia, you know, we think that uh, it is a Muslim country, no freedom for uh, ladies, and by God, they have tremendous freedom. In fact, in our country, our ladies do not have that much freedom. If I look at any time on the roads, more than 50 percent of the drivers, you know, their own vehicles are uh, ladies. And any office you go, more than 50 percent are girls. Okay? In the class, in my class, 60 percent were girls, in chemical engineering. So, normally chemical engineering, we may not get many, I think, you know, electronics, they may get many or in sciences, our people get. So, like that, you know, anyway, there are many girls and one girl, I asked her, okay, please tell me what is, uh, uh, how do you produce? 
She says, no problem sir, I think very, very easy, you take H2, you take yes <laughs> and you take O4, put them in one place, you will get H2SO4. <laughs> You know, really all the people laugh like this only. I told no, I think she is terminator 10, <laughs> not 1, 2, 3, because all terminators come from our future. So, she has come from your future, because she is now imagining that future knowledge where after maybe 100 years, we may be doing the same thing. That is what you are supposed to do in nanotechnology. You have to control the products the way you want. How do you start? You have to start from molecules. So, nature does that, how our body is formed, you know, I mean at the level of uh, you know that sperm and egg level, where is the shape? There is no shape there, no? We are, I mean the, the sperm has separate its shape and egg has its own shape, but by combining those two and then the DNA information in maybe one month, you will have one shape. It is not true only for humans, I think for all life, you know all the mammals, after two months it will have different shape. And at the end of ninth month, we are here. Okay, this shape will not change. I think only slightly it may change till nineteenth year or eighteenth year, teens. Okay, so you see that is nanotechnology. It is building up from the molecules. Because now we want to control that at a molecular level, you need lot of sophistication for doing this. Why molecules you cannot see? You have to catch one molecule H two, and then catch another S two yes, and then put them together and then bring O4, join together and then give the h 2 so 4 In fact, we may reach, you know, we do not know after 200, 300 years later, that may be what, what we are doing. You, if you go to doctor at that time, he will just call you, okay, this is the disease you have, so this is the medicine, he may pull out all these molecules, benzene, toluene and all that together. <laughs> take. <laughs> no, really it may happen, no? it is really beautiful, that is why life is so beautiful, if you uh, imagine all these possibilities. And we came to this level because of our imagination only. This level we have reached because of our imagination. We are able to fly very happily in uh, sky with that big flights where we have you know that particularly Airbus 800 or something is there, where my God, it is like this building I say, more than this building, size wise. So, how beautifully it is flying. How did you get this? We got that because we have observed birds fly and uh, you felt sorry that uh, I do not have wings to fly. Okay. And then even people tried that, they had wings, you know that condor man or something they call. So, they jumped from buildings, broken their legs and all that. So, many, <laughs> many people tried that. Okay. It is their sacrifice, what uh, happily afterwards, I think, uh, who are the people? Uh, right, right brothers. Yeah, right brothers, it seems they used to go to these birds, wherever they have in the water, they used to simply observe it seems how the birds are taking off when they are flying and when they land, how they land, okay, catching fish and all that it, they, they do not bother, okay, but only flying and then landing only our problem. <laughs> so, birds can you know, they are flying and then also landing there only to catch fish, so that they can eat and then you know survive, that is their food. But we are not uh, doing that, we want to fly, how beautiful it is. Now, rackets and most wonderful thing is, my God, billions of miles away, someone takes the photograph that comes to earth with a beautiful uh, picture. What kind of you know our medicines, how many lives are saved you know because of our uh, medicines produced by you know pharmacists and chemical engineers and biochemists. How many I think you know and chemical engineers save the world, I do not know whether you know this or not, because at one point of time particularly Haber process for ammonia and why he was so much interested in having this ammonia process finally, to be used as fertilizers, only for that. Okay. At that time, population is increasing, but fertilizer, I mean uh, the, uh, the growth without any additional fertilizer, the growth of food is not that much, production of food. So, that is why at one point of time, chemical engineering is really saved by producing large amounts of uh, fertilizers, where the productivity increased 5 times, 10 times with the same land, the area is same. But if from the same land, because of putting these fertilizers, then they got more and more, uh, you know, all the uh, whatever they, they produce, wheat or whatever, right. So, that is our fruits, vegetables, all that they could produce. That is why I think we also contributed for saving the world. And also, another saving the world is penicillin. 
Penicillin invention is one of the greatest uh, you know stories for chemical engineers also. For biochemists, chemical engineers and even doctors, all these three people together they worked and then finally, they could produce during second world war penicillin and then that penicillin saved many, many lives. Many families were happy. Otherwise, I think you know many people would have, uh, would have been without fathers in that family, right. Because at that time only, only men were fighting, women were only at, the, at home, right. So, that saved a lot of lives. So, like that the chemical engineering contributions just by learning thermodynamics, heat transfer, mass transfer, fluid mechanics, that is all. That is again one of the beautiest parts which I like in chemical engineering. Any chemical you bring in the world, only five subjects. Correct, no? What are the five subjects? Of course, reaction engineering is one, mass transfer, heat transfer, and momentum transfer. If you combine all these three as transport phenomena, that also will become only one subject. Right? And then, of course, material and energy balance of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics will tell you whether what is possible, what is not possible. Right? So, that is why now onwards, please try to explain, you know, you catch some of you. See, here you may be happily enjoying and then you know, you thought that you have understood. But the moment again you cross the door, you may forget. That is why you have to repeat yourself. That is why in your room, you repeat what you have learnt here, just sit down and then try to. Because we do not tell many things. You know, this entire class, I have just told you what is chemical engineering. Only one point. To make that one point, we give so many examples. That is all, in every class there will be only one point or two points. The moment you go home, you just note down that point. And the explanation and all that, you catch someone, you catch some computer science guy in your room, in your hostel, okay? and then take him for tea and then start telling this. <laughs> okay? Girls also, right? <laughs> yeah. So, till he gets bored, because you know, he cannot immediately run away, because you bought him tea. So, I think at least the tea is over, he will be there with you. So, till that time, I think you can tell that, you know, it is only whether he listens or not, you know, do not worry, because most of us are like that. We sit here, our mind can go somewhere, right. That is what I, that is why I told you I like uh, Matrix movie, because of that. Because you sit in the chair, put that rod here, you go anywhere, you know, <laughs> right. So, that is why all of you should see that movie, right, yeah, that, that Matrix. So, that is what, because that is what, what we do. He has shown that in a beautiful way in that movie. All the time we do that. Right now, you may be listening to me, but your mind would have been thinking time, okay? maybe thinking next class, maybe thinking uh, that for those people who do not have next class, they may be thinking food. You know, they have. So, so many things in your mind. right? So, that is why I think this one chemical engineering itself, if you are now trying to tell or you discuss on your own with your friends, all chemical engineers together, then you will not forget. Otherwise, if you simply go out of this room and then okay, let me see when, the, when it comes to examination or not. So, uh, most of the time you know we postpone till examination. right? So, if you are trying to do that, you will not learn much. I tell you in any class, you will not have more than one or two concepts, in every points, not even concepts. Okay, I think I will stop here and uh, yeah, this is what is the first question. Uh, the entire semester, I can talk about these four questions. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>